Hi everyone, welcome back to Studio Lou. I'm here today with Tuesday 10, so let's jump into it. For more details on Tuesday 10, you can check the description box below. Um, so what I have today is this bit of packaging that came from something I bought, and I was thinking it's got a nice low profile. It would be a great shaker card, so that is one thing I want to play with today. Um, then I have this, it's like an art magazine page, but I really love this 1909 air show image. And then I have um, a little, little sort of folio of um, this children's book, Hélène et le bouquet de la Salle, and uh, it is really cute. And then I have a little bit of this leftover, um, these are blue fussy cuts. I can't recall whose digital this is, but I figured we could use those. And then this is um, from a toy book, I think, a Toys and Dolls book. And I like this old Miss Dolly Daisy Dimple uh, ad. And then this is also from a doll book. Um, I recently tore up a bunch of doll books because I'm going to be making um, some journals that are sort of haunted dollhouse uh, themed and these are some Jumo uh, dolls these are the different markings that would be on the porcelain and I just thought that these were really cool like great for collage um, so I'm not sure if I want to just cut them up and make collagey bits with them um, or like actually use them or maybe both who knows um, and then I have another Jumo pattern doll, Elena is her name, and I thought that was a cool ad. And then the Jumo, um, like, logo kind of, I thought that was kind of cool. Then we have just an index page, which I think would be a fun background. And we have a collage board um, that I made during the month of March, during Mass Make March. So my objective today is to try not to do, like, a two-hour video. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to get started here with this. Now, I found this from a children's book, and I think it will be pretty perfect for here. There's just a few things that I want to do to kind of make it a little more um, interesting and hide a few things. So I'm going to take some of my gilding wax here, and I'm going to kind of cover over the foot of this woman that's up here and cover over the face that's on that planet because we don't want either of those they're not like a part of the picture just make sure that that's good and opaque all right so that's done And then I need to get the rest of this <laughs> gilding wax off my finger. There we go. Okay. Um, I've also grabbed some little star sequins. So the first thing I think I need to do with this is back it onto something a little bit thicker because it's just a very thin little like book sleeve kind of paper. Um, and I'm going to back it onto another book sleeve that's actually a little, a little thicker maybe. Um, what else do I have here? Actually, here's some. Let me use folder. Just kind of sorting through my scraps. One second. <laughs> there it is. Okay. I just keep this bin of like backing material under my desk so so I always have lots of backing material hanging about okay yeah that would be better I think okay so let's just glue this down and so it's a nice day today we had a really nice weekend had a visit from my parents because it was Mother's Day and we figured we'd have a nice day and we did. Um, had a nice, had a couple of nice meals and went out um, and had a nice walk at the Ecology Center and that was fun. I'm going to check the size of this before I start cutting. Okay, so this is 
close to that. Okay, so I think what I want to do when I look at the framing of this is I want to kind of cover anything that's going to be around here because this will still be visible. I'm going to be keeping this rim here. Um, so I think I might use some scraps of this to just kind of go around the moon. So I'll just like tear, maybe tear a little. Yeah, okay. I need my glue book rid of that gilding wax page and what was I saying oh yeah okay so yeah so we had a nice walk at the ecology center and that was a lot of fun and um, I'm thinking over the next few days I might start collecting some plants I haven't had time to really do that but I want to start doing some dyeing so that will become very necessary so when I do this kind of piecing together paper like this you just put a little bit of glue on the edge of like you know whatever you you've already glued down so that they kind of seam together um, and then today in a little bit I'm gonna go swimming with the kiddos it's gonna be kind of a somber swim day though because unfortunately all is not roses today so I received some extremely sad news this week that I'm kind of processing in my own way and it feels kind of complicated around uh, Mother's Day I'm not a big fan of these days these mothers fathers kind of days because I feel like the um, you know the way that we indulge in these things in society it doesn't take into account for real how it hurts the people who really hurt during these times those people who you know for any for, for a multitude of reasons have a very hard time maybe they've lost a parent maybe they wanted to be a parent and they couldn't be maybe they have a bad relationship with a parent I kind of feel like these are the days that really hurt the most for those people and uh, I, I know that because I have many people in my life who experience that and I always feel kind of torn on these days and I don't try to make too big a deal out of them even with my own kids and I think you know a part of it too is I've always felt like I don't like how they feel like an obligation you know like I think a lot of holidays that are created for us sort of often are created by you know corporations so that they can make money selling us things for, the, for these holidays for our loved ones you know to kind of understand that we love them through the things that we buy or something so that's another topic but I guess what I what I'm trying to say is or I'm trying to ask maybe is like is it worth it like our societal obsession with these kinds of days is it worth it when we know what kind of pain others are still going through and even when we say, you know, I'm sorry that you're experiencing this, is that enough to just keep enjoying it regardless? These are the things that I think about, like, often. So, yes, I had a really good Mother's Day with my kids, for sure. But I, I feel like, for me, every day is Mother's Day because, like, I don't need a, anything other than, like, the love of my kids that I earn, um, you know, and that I chose to bring them here and I was blessed enough to be able to bring them here. So, like, that's what I think about. And why am I saying all this today? Well, and why, what does it have to do with swimming? Where am I going on this crazy jaunt I'm going on? Well, several months ago, I met someone at the pool and he's a really nice man. Um, I didn't know him very well during this whole time I've known him, but he was attracted to talk to me because, um, he liked my glasses and he liked my husband's glasses and he's like where are you you know I like your glasses where'd you get them and this is something that I get like all the time because I try to always wear like unique glasses so um you know so I told him and, and he's like hey do you have Facebook because a lot of the names like I buy a lot of glasses online and they have like the most bizarre um names <laughs> like the companies that make them um 
topic for another day. But um, yeah, so we got to talking. And then, like, I would say that we're quite different, but that um, I like him. I thought he was very funny. And so um, the other day we were talking about maybe getting together to go to a movie because we went to see the Super Mario Brother movie. And then um, he was talking about wanting to go see the Dungeons and Dragons movie and asked me, like, would you want to come along? But it was like on a day that we were going to be away. So I wasn't able to connect with him, um, but we really wanted to, to spend you know, some time together at a movie would be a lot of fun. All of us get together with the kids. So he has a son who's 10, who's a really great kid. And um, I'm dragging this on because I don't even want to say what happened. But um, yeah, so I, I learned that essentially the next morning after I spoke to him, um, he died. So... That's got me feeling a myriad of emotions um, because all I think about is the fact that he was a single dad. I think he was probably about 38 years old. He was going to school in the Children and Families program to become somebody who works with at-risk youth. He was the center and is the center of his son's entire life. And he lived and breathed for that child and everything he does um, is for that child. He was going to school during the daytime and he was working overnights at night. And he was taking his child to a lot of his events like his basketball games and he was um, just being an altogether good dad even though, you know, he, I would say, grew up a little bit in a rough neighborhood. He had a bit of a rough past, absolutely. I'll stop for one minute to tell you that I'm going to move on and I'm going to stitch around this later on, but I really love how it turned out. Um, so yeah, he, he had a, a rougher upbringing in, in the area that he lived in. And I think he was still growing uh, out of some of that. I don't think that those sort of things when you're when you're young I don't think that they immediately go away and it takes you a long time to kind of uh, get out of those things so he was also a spoken word poet an insightful and intelligent guy with a great sense of humor even though it might be a little bit dark he was a very inclusive person who didn't need perfection from his friends think he he reflected a lot on his own past and the things that he got into that were not so savory and he was able to kind of see past the flaws in people and uh, try to just know them for who they are so yeah there there's a lot to process there and I'm trying to process it and all I can think about is his his son who now is without any parents. Um, so his mother, Pat, like they have a complex past that I won't get into because it's not my story to tell, but, um, yeah, he has no parents anymore. He has grandparents and he has an aunt, um, but he doesn't have his dad who's the center of his life. And, uh, they were not just father and son. They were buddies. They were best friends. They were they were a constant, they were always together and they were getting through all sorts of things together. I felt like through Facebook, I got to watch them kind of grow up together or, or like it was an ongoing kind of thing. And um, yeah, he and I had talked a little bit about homeschooling and you know what I do to homeschool because he was kind of interested in it because um, he had, you know, some issues with the school system, as I think a lot of us do as the government in Ontario interjects itself further and further into the education of our children all the time with their conservative politics and all sorts of things that don't work. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really not the news that I was hoping to get for sure. So 
I'm just going to remember him and I'm just going to think about him and think about how he impacted my life and yeah. <sighs> Sorry guys, I know it's a little bit of a heavy one, but it's something I'm processing. So if I sound a little different or I sound a little off, I'm certainly, it's certainly true. <laughs> That's how I feel. I feel off. But to know him was to know that he wanted you to be happy and he wanted the best for everyone and he was willing to you know do what was needed to kind of help you get there and that's what I will remember him for is someone who was there for people and um, yeah it was just an altogether nice person and a great dad so he has a GoFundMe is a GoFundMe set up for him uh, for his final expenses because his family will definitely need help there. He was a young man and this was very unexpected and I don't actually even know the cause. I don't even know what happened. Um, I don't think I even need to know really but yeah it it's going to be hard so hopefully there will be some funds there for his son. Maybe I'll share the GoFundMe in the link, the description box under this video. Okay, so I'm going to, I think, make a tag with one of these little images of Ellen. This little cutout of her, she's adorable. So let's just fussy cut her. So what else, what else? Um, my daughter tonight is going to one of her groups and she's going to be practicing essentially like, what do they call it, like vertical skills, like climbing and learning how to climb like trees, man-made structures and, you know, do all of that kind of safely and, um, yeah, so that's what she's up to tonight. My son has been asking me since yesterday to go swimming, so. But he was very happy. Both the kids were super happy to hang out with the grandparents yesterday. That was very nice. All right, so how do I want that? Do I want that on this or on here? I think maybe up here I like better. So then um, I'm going to glue that down and I think I want to use a word snippet from Release the Crafton. So, let's get this all glued down. And I have a ton of gardening to do. We are revamping our garden uh, and I don't feel like doing it. <laughs> But I have to. <laughs> okay, so Gokoda, waking up at dawn and going outside just to hear the birds chirping and singing. Very lovely. So let's just kind of deconstruct this a little bit. And I'm going to put it on something so it stands up on this paper. But I'm going to cut this apart. Then I need to find what I want to put it on. <laughs> I always heard one of my kids like squealing above my head. I think it's my son. There's like a little, <laughs> a little vent like right above my head. So I can always hear them pretty good. Whatever's going on through the vent. <laughs> So let's glue this on. And next we will get waking up at dawn.
Hopefully I'm in frame here. Sorry if I'm not. <laughs> Try to keep everything in the middle. And I, on a happier note, I got to see my neighbor's brand new little baby. He is six weeks old right now. go and check out what's going on with my son. I think what's going on, from what I can hear, <laughs> is that my daughter is going upstairs to get dressed for swimming and he always feels like he has to go right away with her. But he doesn't. He needs to wait. So I'll probably go and figure that out and go to swimming and then come back and I will finish this video. But first I'm just going to finish this little bit here because yeah, that's good. Oops. We don't have to leave quite yet. I have like a habit <clears throat> of being like a serial early person. <laughs> like I'm always early to everything and then like being early does not work when you go to the pool because they have a very stringent like schedule they have to because like they have different classes and programs so they can't have you know people from a different program getting in the pool when there's other people from a different program because like they have to have a certain number of people per you know lifeguard and all that kind of thing and then having kids there makes that even more complicated because they have to have like x number of lifeguards and parents and that kind of thing so yeah okay, let's trim this and that i want it to be a tag and i don't have to back it because it's already backed with some fun paper and i'm good with that so i'll probably put some fun fabric up top i just need to cut this little edge off there we go so yeah that will get um stitched around with some fabric I might come in with just a bit of ink. Just the white space there around Elin. There we go. She's cute. So that goes into the stitching pile. All right, we've done three. Now, I don't think I want to use that image. This one, um, I don't think I will either, to be honest. It's... Um, I don't know, maybe I'll use the flowers, but I don't want to use this image of Elaine. It's just not. That would make a nice pocket, though. And I am currently working on a journal that's got a lot of botanical stuff going on. So that could be good. Make a simple little pocket with that. Okay. Now my son is pushing a chair around the kitchen. Mornings are just noisy these days. And my son recently got out of the stage. So like for the longest time in the morning, he was sleeping in like longer than the rest of us. And he doesn't come out of his room by himself. He waits for someone to come to fetch him. So like we have a baby mother, like we can listen to like what's going on in the room and we can, we have a little, um, like a little camera thing that we can see. So when he wakes up, we'll go get him. But now he started waking up earlier and he's coming downstairs by himself. So my solace of, <laughs> my solace is gone, but that's okay. I'm happy to see him in the morning. He's like super, super cuddly and adorable in the morning. It's my, honestly some of my favorite time with him before he gets all hyped as a three-year-old does. I appreciate the little bit of quiet time that I get. Um, this week I have a whole bunch of research to do um, for work. Lots of like reading and learning kind of stuff I've got to do that I have been kind of not getting done because I've just been very busy with other things. That have been keeping me away from it. I just want to put a few things on here to make this a little more interesting. I 
I'm also working on several digital collections that will be paper dolls. Um, kind of more of my fun little creatures that I make that are kind of anthropomorphic and some of them are a little more abstract and I really love how they're turning out but they take a very long time it's like going into like I think the third month now of making these and I've um I sort of set my heart on how many creatures I want to have illustrated but then I have to like organize them into kind of sensible collections as I work on the way that they look and the kind of style that I'm illustrating in at the time and then I um you know I have a lot of work refinement that I have to do with them and uh it takes some time for sure but they're getting there ever closer I need a paper I'm gonna put something Maybe some scrap behind that, but mm, I don't think that's the right color scheme. With that. No, I don't think so. Okay. Maybe. I think I prefer a blue. Yeah, blue. Okay. up this whole thing. I'm just going to trim around it to kind of give it like a bit of a background and also to give a little more strength to this bird at the top so that we have something a little more substantial to work with and then I will stitch on that as well. Okay so next page. Do I have any, um, let's see, yeah, I do have some like acetate and stuff I wanted to use, let's see, that would be good, what if, yeah, take this out, right here, Okay, this is the inside. Actually, I might use that as the outside and keep the in index part. I kind of like that. So let's lay this on here then. Um, trace around this. This is going to be the inside thing I'm going to put in here. Gonna cut into the index a little bit. Well, that's okay. You know, I, I just like it for it what it is. I don't need it to be perfect. So put in here. Now I don't want to cut right up to it. I want to cut like inside of it. I cut under the index part. And then, okay, this. Okay, I have to take a quick stitch break. I'll be right back. Okay, so we've stitched the acetate here. So now we have the acetate. Now, one thing I didn't account for, but I decided to go with it, is that the glue strip is visible there. So it doesn't matter, and I'll show you why. We're gonna we're gonna keep on keeping on here. Um, so I think what I'll try to use is something else from Tuesday 10 because that helps me to kind of move Tuesday 10 along. So I'm going to use this and it's going to go on here. 
So we'll just put glue on here. Now this was the card, right, from the back side of the acetate. We know they're the same size because I traced it. So let's add this to here. Let's make sure I'm mostly good, I think. Yep, okay. Mostly good. Smooth that down and then also I want to ink before we um, lock it up in there. I want to ink. I want to ink most of it actually with um, vintage photo distress ink. Slide right across it. Leave a little bit out, and then I think I might also take a bit of salvage patina, distress oxide. Okay. Then this will go here. Where's my glue strip? It's on that side. Yeah, perfect. All right, so then this will go like that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, let's put glue um, around this edge here. Set up. I want to go like. So I'm just kind of trying to line this up in a way that I find pleasing, and then I'm trying to decide if I want to fold this over or if I just want to like glue this here. Hmm. Because I don't need the backing. I've got a backing on this already, and it will keep it a little thinner. Okay, I'll be right back. I have to stitch again. Alrighty, so I'm all stitched around. That's all done. So now I just want to check and make sure. I think everything is on the card surface that I want. Mainly I just want that index and it's there. Okay, so I'm just going to cut, I think right around, yeah, right around the card itself. There we go. Get rid of that. Oh, that's so cute. Yay. All right. So now I just want to add a few things to it because we have that tape line there. And also it would be nice to add a little bit of color, I think, um, on top of this. So I think I'll probably use some of this. I'm just going to look at what I have here because um, I've got those cool Jumo things too. Um, hmm. I don't want to use this one. So yeah, I took a little break because I had to run to swimming. Had a nice, nice, nice swim. And um, always a refreshing thing to do in the day. Quickly fussy cut this. It's a very fiddly, very fiddly fussy cut. <laughs> but thankfully this one has a little bit of an outline to it. I try to do the same on my um, 
my digitals where I've got fussy or fussy cuts, you add a little outline in like a beige tone or a brown tone and then I think it makes people feel more apt to not have to like fussy cut right up to the image. Okay. Get rid of these scraps. Yeah, I'm thinking I want that to be like there. And I think with these, I am going to use them as collage fodder because I just think they're cool. if we put like one there one up here maybe yeah okay so let's get this all ink um not inked we're gonna ink at the end I'm gonna just ink everything at the end but I'm trying to hype myself up too get on my garden plan. When I was going out, my neighbors were planting their new front garden. They got a whole new, like, super fancy driveway, like a decorative kind of patterned concrete driveway. Um, so they're planting their flowers all around it. And they were asking me because I have a bunch of scrap wood in my front of my at the top of my driveway near my garage that I I don't need and I've been thinking about what to do with it to get rid of it because I don't want it anymore so they want to use it to build some garden beds in their backyard and I said go for it but um I'm actually doing the opposite I'm removing my wooden garden beds and putting in stone ones because they attract less critters they can't burrow into stone <laughs> so and maybe I will mention that to them because um, they may find that their critters go up if uh, they do that okay. all right now let's do a bit of a darker um, more pronounced ink around the edge. And then I need to just pop a little bit of glue at the bottom here. We've got a little bit of paper that got too close to the edge of the stitching I think so I just could use a little a little bit of help to stay put that's better okay so that's done I think yeah okay what do we have left here All doll related stuff, I think. Um, this one, I think I just like it on its own. I'll just be like backing it and inking it. uncovered but it's okay
I think it's a beautiful day today and I might go collect some plants tonight because I've got all these pages, all these um, book pages waiting for me to dye them. I've got them all in a basket, so that would be a good project to get done. going to keep this as just a nice thin piece of paper. A great little journal card tuck in. Yeah, I'm happy with that as is. Okay. So this is the other main piece we have. The rest of these I'm going to just use for collage fodder, I think. So let's cut them up and get them ready to go here. glue book out of the way here. Don't need it right now. There's my glue pen. So since I got um, the stainless steel pins for my glue, it's working a heck of a lot better. Because <laughs> Yeah, it was really getting jammed up with rusty pins. This is good to like actually get all of this stuff that I save into its final stage of where I'm going to use it, which is for these, just this. I just want to have them as collage fodder. Because they're nice little labels. <clears throat> this one has a bug on it. That's kind of cool. are so many Canada geese nesting in my neighborhood right now, which means that very soon we're going to be spending a lot of time on the road waiting for geese to cross because they take forever with all their babies. Okay. Those are done. Those will go in my little collage snippets thing. Now we have this. What do I want to do with this? still have this bit of collage board. Tear that down to sizes that I want to use it. So I'm just going to take a little break and fussy cut these and come right back. Okay, so I finished my fussy cutting. I just set that stuff aside and I've decided that I would like to change the color of this paper. So I'm first going to spray it with some coffee. 
Then I'm going to take some Distress Oxide Spray in Pine Needles and I'm just going to spray it a few times here. And then the packaging paper I want to back it with, I am going to just smoosh it on top. It's just a paper bag. So then we get this on the paper bag. Then I need to dry this, um, but I'm first, let me see. I like to use up whatever I can of the excess oxide and stuff. So I like to just kind of capture the extra color because I don't want this to be like super heavy. Oops. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. So then now I have this nice piece of paper to use for something else. So then I'll take a little break and I'll just dry this and come back. Okay, so we've dried this, we've dried this, and now I just want to stick them together um, with some glue stick. So just glue this together here. go ahead and just cut this out. thinking about maybe doing like some kind of a piece of ephemera that's sort of like like shutters um, at the back so we would fold this and then we would fold this and they would kind of come together at the back I will stitch around it but like you will have you know writing space on the back and this little shutters that open yeah that's what I'm gonna do so I'll stitch that then we have left these pockets that I made and the tags from the collage board or the tag, uh, rather, it's not multiple, it's only one. So I have the little blue fussy cuts here. And I think I will just try to arrange them in a way. And I may also use a few of these. This one here. And then the bird on there. here. My dog is barking at a squirrel. I can hear him. <laughs> He's getting hyper and jumping on the couch. I know exactly what's going on up there. I can totally <laughs> hear from my husband. He's been really obsessed with this squirrel in our backyard lately. So he no longer has access to our backyard because, um, we have deemed it is just not a healthy thing for him because being that he's a beagle, he just wants to like search and get himself into trouble. And also beagles are renowned Houdini dogs. So we're thinking we're just gonna keep him out of the backyard because he does a lot of what I call wilding back there, which is like running around and jumping in my garden and just generally being a pain in the butt so I'm going to uh, keep strong the rule that when he needs to go out he has to get on his leash and he has to go out front I think it's a lot healthier for him mentally to be honest because beagles in my experience from when I was a kid they're just not good with like no structure whatsoever and like having too much roaming space because they do like to roam and um 
they smell something and literally all concern for everything else is gone. All they want to do is track down that smell. So I don't want him hunting around in the backyard and I definitely don't want him catching anything because I get a lot of little little frail things that end up in my yard, little baby bunnies that get raised there. And we have a robin family that um, every year they have their baby in our backyard. And then we have, um, every year they have one egg every year. It's so cute. But then, you know, robins, they stress me out so much because for the first few days of their lives, they can't, you know, that they're out of the nest. Well, the first, I'd say week and a half to two weeks, they can't fly so they are like out there and they're totally helpless and yeah I would not want to have my dog out there causing them trouble I've already had a lot of drama with these robins I love them but um, I now have a practice where when their babies are little and they're hopping around in my yard I actually put them in a cardboard box at night and put them just inside the door and then I put them back out in the morning so they can continue to fumble around because for several years I trusted nature's process and it's the starlings usually that come along um, and they have this terrible dashing practice they do like because they like to eat robin eggs and also like I don't know if they try to eat their babies or if they just try to take on their nests but they will they will end the life of a robin a small robin so I have gotten at my wits end with that and um, now I put them in the house because it's just too frustrating and upsetting for me <laughs> to see the same thing happen more than once and it happened twice and I'm like okay that's it now you're coming in at night so they do and it's been a success for the last five years I'll say like it's good because they they stay calm and safe I make them I make a little cotton nest for them and they sit in there and um, then in the morning we don't touch them or anything we don't talk to them we just dump them outside again and off they go and it got to the point where like they almost expected it like they didn't they don't come to me but they expect that I'm going to um, drop a little net over them and put them in the box in the net until morning and usually it's only about three or four days of that and then they take flight they hang out in my apple tree and it's like I don't mind if they're up in a tree but it's when they're on the ground that they're at their most vulnerable so it's where they can get dashed by the um, starlings and also where the um, you know anything on the ground can get them so yeah I just like to protect the baby robins because they're very cute and I just have trouble with some things in nature it's like hard to just leave it alone okay so these don't need to be backed um, this one does but these don't so we'll set those aside to go on to the stitching pile and then I'm just going to back this really quick and maybe cut it into a tag. Um, hmm. Back it with this leftover packaging paper that I sprayed. This is a paper bag from a store that we go to when my daughter is at her Sparks group. I take my son shopping at a store called Giant Tiger. I don't know if you if you have those stores where you live, but it's a lot of Canada and um, it's kind of like a little department store and it's the only thing within driving distance of where my daughter goes to her her sparks thing. So like, you know, we usually try to find something to do for a couple hours while she's there. So our options are to go to Giant Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> where we like never go otherwise <laughs> or to like you know wander around outside which we usually do um so yeah I've been going to giant tiger more often lately so my because my son likes to he likes to go shopping and so he uh he has a ball in there and also the people are always super nice when we go in so I keep going back 
Okay, I think it's stitching time and then I'll come back and we'll do our little parade of everything we finished. Okay, be right back. All right, here we go. So here's my little stitched around shuttered little journal card kind of piece. Um, one, then the tag with a then two, and then these pockets are three and four. This tag is five. This pocket is six, and I guess I could snip these little strings. Number seven is our little balloon um, tab card. Number seven is our little um, shaker. I won't make you. I won't make you sick, but yeah, I like how that turned out. Number seven is our little acetate trapped window here. And number eight is this little fun journal card. So I actually turned 10 things into eight things. We've actually gone down in numbers for once. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll talk to you again very soon. And don't forget to check the description box below for more details and stuff, as well as the GoFundMe for my dear friend. So take care and we'll talk soon. Bye for now.